This video will show how to take data on the XPS system. So after logging onto the system, making sure the X-ray source is already up and running, what we want to do then is select the Specs Lab 2, and again this is assuming the analyzer power supply is on also. What we should notice is that the serializers are loading here. One thing you should also notice when you're loading the software is over on the detector there's a green flashing light that should be flashing when you first turn on the power supply um, but then when the analyzer connects that should go to solid green. So the uh, program is going to look like this. In this case the analyzer, it's already recognized as the analyzer, it should be the Phobos HSA 3500. We check the settings here. Uh, on the actual power supply, you'll determine which anode you're using. You want to make sure that the uh, analyzer understands which, an which anode is being used. That's found here on the sources, under X-ray dummy. If we look at settings, so in this case it's the aluminum, and that's what I have selected on the actual power supply. We can change that to magnesium if you're using the magnesium source instead. So we'll OK that. Close. Uh, next thing we want to do then is we'll set up the regions and so the region edit this is where you put in the data and basically defines the scan parameters and so if I select new here you can call the region whatever you want I'll call this one wide scan so XPS method um, this is the correct choice for the detector calibration and we'll use the fixed analyzer transmission. The entrance slit uh, should be set to 5 by uh, setting 5, 7 by 20 and then this is open. If it's something different than you want to set it to that those numbers are written right here on the computer on the monitor so you can use that. You can change the magnification uh, lens mode that determines what the area that you're sampling is. Uh, in this case I'll leave it as medium magnification Instead of doing a wide scan, I'm going to go from 1100 EV down to 0 EV. Uh, pass energy uh, is a, basically a trade-off between a uh, number of counts, number of electrons that arrive per second, and then the energy resolution of your scan. In this case, I'm doing a wide scan, so 30 or 40 EV pass energy is fine. If instead, I was trying to do a high resolution scan, I would probably make that 10 EV. All right, so I'm going to leave it at 30 EV for the pass energy. The energy step basically just tells how to increment the uh, um, energy on the analyzer. I'm going to set that to 1 EV. Again, for a wide scan, 1 EV or 2 EV is fine. If instead you're doing a narrower scan, you probably want to set that to 0.1 or 0.2 EV. Uh, I'm going to do a single scan here. We can always add more to it later. Um, after all that information is entered, then what you have to do is hit the validate button and that just makes sure everything's okay and everything stayed the same 1100 to 0 EV and so we'll go ahead and acquire this is just a reminder it reminds us that the entrance slit and exit slit should be that if you ever need to change the entrance or exit slit the software itself doesn't change that it just tells the analyzer what they're set at so please contact uh, um, either Dr. Wagner, Dr. Dunham or Dr. McKellistrom if you need the actual uh, entrance and exit slits changed because that's a mechanical switch that has to be changed Okay, that. And so now it is starting to take the data here. And so it's going to step through the energy. So I'll use the full scale here. So it's giving us binding energy on the bottom and then intensity in counts per second um, on the left hand side.
So as the scan goes through, I can point out just a couple other things. If you're wondering what energy a certain peak is at, as you move the cursor, it automatically reads both uh, the um, binding energy and also the counts per second, so you can read that pretty easily. You can always uh, zoom in on an area. So if I just box this in, I zoom in on that. If I want to go back, I just double click and it'll go back to the wide scan. So as this continues to scan, let me show you a couple other things. The window here, if we go to acquisition, what that'll do is bring up this acquisition window. If we wanted to stop this at any point, we could hit abort. It will actually stop it and give you an option of whether you save the uh, spectrum or not. Uh, if you hit the suspend, it just uh, stops it for a bit. So let me close that. And so in this case, you can clearly see two very strong peaks here and some of these other peaks. And then um, through here, you can see the signal to noise. Depending on what you're looking for, if you're just trying to find uh, peaks, this may be good enough to identify what's there. Um, in some cases, you might wonder if this is a peak or if it's noise. If that's the case, you can always go back and do uh, another scan or add to it, add the number of scans to it. And that will help to reduce or increase the signal to noise. Alright, so scan is done. If we decided that we wanted to add more scans to it to get a better signal to noise, we'd just go back to our regions edit. We're still in the wide scan. I could then add, change this number. And when I do that, then I could just uh, um, hit validate and acquire, and it'll go back and add to that. If instead we're okay with what we have there, let me go back to the data window, the scan here. And let's say we want to save this, or in particular, what often we have to do is we want to import this um, data into CASA XPS. And to do that, then what we want to do is go to the window files, and then here we can do a file, save the file. But if we want to use it in CASA XPS, what we need to do is change it to a .vms file. And so again, this has to be highlighted file name has to be highlighted then you do file export and then select down here dot uh, VMS and then that will save it as a VMS file and that then can be imported into CASA XPS so let me go ahead and save that Uh, if you want to then do a narrower scan, all we have to do then is go back to, say, so if we go here, let's say we wanted to look at this peak here in a little more detail, so about 520 to 540, for example, what we could do then is go to Regions Edit, Scroll this narrow. I'm going to go from 540 EV to 520 EV. 
And let's change the pass energy to 20 EV. And we'll go to 0 0.2 for the step size. And again, depending on the number of scans, let's just do 2 here. Again, after all that's entered, we hit validate and then acquire. If we watch down here, we can see it's scanning, but right now I have the d uh, data window hidden behind. So if I now bring the data window back up, we can see it's actually down here. I'm going to double click. And so we can now see it's doing a, a narrow scan here. Change the pass energy, change the step size so we get more detail here. You'll notice that the intensity went down because I went from 30 EV pass energy to a 20 EV pass energy. So the number of counts per second goes down, but my energy resolution will go up right? or get better. And so in this case now, this is just two scans. If I was trying to peak fit this, probably not good enough. And so what I would then do is go back to regions edit, make sure I'm on the narrow. And let's say we change that to five. It will now add three to the previous scans. So again, go back to the data window. And again, now it's going to add three more scans onto those two before. And what we should see is that the signal to noise improves and the, the plot smooths out. And again, the number of scans uh, does depend on what type of data you're looking for. In some cases, you might need uh, 50, 50 scans. In some cases, five is enough. It just depends on what you're trying to do. So again, that scan's done. So if we go to files again, so now we see there's two different groups here. Again, if I wanted to export it, I'd have to actually highlight file here. If I want to save it, I can just save it as, we'll just leave it as file one. And there we have our data. Uh, if we want to exit out of this, all we have to do is we can just do a file exit and we'll shut everything down. So in this case now the software shut down, high voltage is set down to, shut down to the analyzer power supply, but we actually have to physically go over there and uh, turn the rocker switch to off.